All right. Howdy, partners. Yeah. How are you doing today, Yvonne? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Patrick, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. So for those who are joined in, so we have quite a few people here. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we are, this is the Howdy Partner Show. So uh, essentially what we do is uh, we welcome on, you know, partners from the APN, which is our, uh, as far as our Amazon network and partner network. And uh, we allow them to showcase their new and greatest, newest and greatest uh, implementations, whether solutions, architectures, and uh, very nice and fun demos. So I believe today we have a pretty, pretty tasty uh, episode and segment. So I hope you all are interested and I definitely hope you learn something new and, and fun. Um, and today we're talking a little bit about, um, we're going to be inviting this company called Connected Fresh and they'll go ahead, go ahead and discuss their um, their product that they're going to be showcasing, I believe it's related to IoT, which Yvonne is yeah. a, a fairly, uh, you know, you know, he's a really good expert into this. So he can probably fill you in on a little bit about that before we bring them in. So I guess, Yvonne, the first thing is, uh, how you doing? And also, uh, what is what is IoT and how can it help businesses and companies, especially restaurants? Um, well, let's just start. Thank there. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. I'm, I'm doing I'm doing great. Uh, you know, uh, so what is IoT, right? That's a very interesting question. First, what does IoT mean? IoT means Internet of Things. So we have an Internet of uh, devices interconnected. So a simple explanation would be, let's say you leave your house in the morning and you go to work, right? So when you get to work, uh, you realize that you forgot to turn off the AC, you know, uh, at your house. So what do you do? Do you drive 45 minutes back to your house to turn up the AC and come back to work, right? That's kind of like difficult thing to do, right? So what yeah. if your AC is connected? What if you can control your AC from an app on your phone? What if you can turn off your AC from an app on your phone directly when you are in your office, right? So that's what Internet of Things is. So you have an Internet of Devices. They are interconnected over the Internet, and they can be controlled and also can share data uh, between other devices as well. So that's basically what the Internet of Thing is. And today we're having, uh, you know, we're having Connected Fresh. So Connected Fresh is this company working or doing in the restaurant field uh, industry. So they're operating their IoT solution in that field. And we're going to have, you know, they're going to come and explain us to us. It's much more detailed what they're doing and how great the solution are and how their solution, you know, are supporting uh, their customer uh, as well. Oh, this is great. Um, in fact, it reminds me of like growing up and, you know, leaving the lights on at the house and, you know, <laughs> your mom's yelling at you and, and just like, man, you know, we got to we got to go back. Uh, you know, so it's, it's not always a great thing or leave it on and have yeah. incur a high cost at the end of the month. So my my allowance wasn't uh, wasn't too well that week. But yeah, this is this is great. And I can see a lot of uh, reasons uh, not just for savings, but just, uh, you know, just being operationally efficient and having sustainability as, as a big point as well. So, yeah, I'm definitely excited to see uh, what, uh, you know, Connected Fresh has to show us today and how they actually are leveraging this technology called Internet of Things. So, uh, in fact, uh, what do you think? We should, should we bring them on now? I think we should yeah, do that, yeah, right? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, awesome. Let's do it. Let's bring them in. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hot Sharp. Hey, Patrick. Hi, Patrick. Hey, Yvonne. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Awesome. Well, welcome. Welcome. I guess give us a brief intro. Uh, tell us about yourself and uh, what does Connected Fresh mean for us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, hi, everyone who's watching. Um, uh, my name is Tushar Agarwal, and uh, I'm the CTO of Connected Fresh. And Connected Fresh, as an overview, provides um, various different monitoring use cases using Internet of Things, as Yvonne was mentioning. And we just take it one step further. We make it at a scale where it's possible for the smallest businesses up to enterprise level to easily onboard this technology and get actual uh, benefits out of it. A lot of these use cases include automated temperature logging, um, um, various different monitorings like leak detection, energy monitoring. Um, it, it just um, it depends on type of sensors you are going and we can enable that. So we built the platform in a way that's, that it's 
much more resilient and not a use case specific. So you can onboard various different use cases using the same platform uh, without incurring a lot of cost or onboarding or setup costs. So that's the idea. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that sounds very interesting. Um, I'm, I'm definitely uh, interested and tuned in, you know, so I guess the, the first question brings brings to my attention is uh, when you say Internet of Things, is this something that's a, uh, like a software that we install, uh, you know, at our locations or, or are we having to purchase something in particular or uh, I guess how um, how do we get your product on premise or even is it even on premise? Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's a great question. I mean, um, so so far, um, most businesses were having issues of, hey, where do I get started, right? How do I start with this um, without spending a lot of money on it? So what we did is we streamlined it, uh, especially from a customer experience perspective, that um, you have a sensor like as small as this, which can, again, I'll go into the technology part of it last various years. And uh, 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 you can you can basically plug it on, stick it on, and it works for you. So it's end-to-end pre-configured and managed by Connected Fresh. And with the hardware itself, um, uh, you come. It comes with a SaaS software service, so it will automatically connect. You will start setting, getting alerts based on your thresholds. Start seeing the data in the dashboards where you can send notifications to various different channels. You can get text messages, phone calls, uh, automated um, um, uh, integration with your existing systems, right? So all that is kind of built in. So we streamlined it to a point where customer receives a package of sensors and hardware. They plug it in, uh, turn it on, and it works for them into it. Uh, fantastic. So, uh, uh, can you like provide a you know a, a, like an overview of what, what Connected Fresh Solution and its unique value proposition like in the market? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, uh, overall, Connected Fresh Solution uh, includes hardware and software part. And uh, um, hardware, we uh, let me just talk about a little bit about the technology of the hardware side. Uh, we right. use this um, uh, public protocol called LoRaWAN. Um, uh, it is publicly available. It uses radio frequency. So um, for various different sensors available in the market. So we don't manufacture these hardware. Um, so it becomes much more affordable for customers to buy when they are um, uh, available in the market. And we pre-configure and set up the use cases end to end. But the unique value proposition is um, um, overall manual temperature logging is required as a FDA compliance for uh, uh, all travel and hospitality and any place which is handling food. So replacing that manual temperature logging with automated temperature using the sensors reduce the amount of hours your um, uh, your workers are spending on doing that rather than focusing on the customer, right? Yeah. So it, it, it takes care of these mundane tasks. And on top of that, that's your intro use case. And then you can add uh, various different use cases like leak detection. So, hey, notify me before a huge... Uh, accident happens, right? Or whether my trash is full or not for better user experience, right? Rather than a customer telling me um, uh, that, hey, can you please change the trash? Like I'm notified ahead of time. Or if, my, if, I'm, if I'm using way too much energy for certain equipment or um, uh, overall in my store or in my location, right? So all those providing you ahead of time kind of gives you a proactive approach of dealing with issues, right? Or dealing with uh, errors before before they become actual problem and then you are reactive towards it, which can lead to revenue loss, uh, overall credibility and uh, customer loss, right? Uh, so that's the unique value proposition that end-to-end, you don't have to worry about it unless you get a notification notified by us that, yeah, now you have to pay attention because that's not your core business. Your core business is to focus the customer, serve the food and things like that, right? So we are there to fill the gap to notify you that automatically. Okay. Wow. So, wow. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Ivan. So, so earlier you showed us that hardware device, but you say uh, connected mm-hmm. also manufacture the hardware component that is leveraging for, you know, for the integration and to end for the solution. So uh, as a customer, am I supposed to have understanding of the hardware and be able to install it? Or how does the installation process work of the hardware devices on, on site? 
Yeah, uh, great question. So to answer your first question, we do not manufacture the devices. We have the ecosystem of partner vendors uh, whom we can uh, purchase the device from, which gives us flexibility to, um, uh, to choose the right partners for our customers. What we discuss with customers is uh, what are their pain points? What are the use cases which we can solve, right? And based on that, we acquire those types of uh, sensors which can help with those use cases. Now, it can be a combination of sensors, right? Or it can be a single sensor which can address that use case, right? So um, we, don't, we don't manufacture them, but the overall onboarding and installation part is very straightforward. And that's where we excel, that we pre-configure everything out of box, so when a customer receives a package, they receive a, a gateway like this, right? And um, this gateway is built on LoRaWAN, which is a radio frequency technology. Um, uh, so it, it creates a network. So your end device are not, uh, end device like that, are not connecting to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or your network, right? Which is not sustainable. Like nowadays, everything is on my Wi-Fi and it's overloaded, right? I want a reliable network, which can, because these are monitoring critical things, right? So I want to be able to rel reliably get my data. So we use the LoRaWAN radio frequency network and all customer has to do is plug in the gateway, turn on the sensor. And for example, if they are monitoring walk-in coolers, freezers, right? Um, uh, they can basically uh, stick it on, stick this inside the walk-in cooler and it will give you real time temperature, right? And they can set, we can set cadences for them. So everything is pre-configured out of box. So customer doesn't have to have any technical enablement or background knowledge. Anyone from a line worker to manager at a restaurant can easily install, self-install it. Wow. Uh, that, that brings me to a, another question. I love the fact, number one, that, you know, we love at Lady West here uh, mentioning anything that we can, you know, take away the burden and, you know, have that undifferentiated heavy lifting. Uh, so, you know, you guys can focus on those innovative, maybe a new thing, new item on the menu versus, you know, making sure uh, you guys are meeting compliance and, you know, make sure there's no leaks, uh, you know, that can definitely be uh, a job of its own. So that, that, that that's really awesome. Um, and I guess I'm curious, uh, is this, I know you, have, you will all have, you all have sensors and such. Is there mm -hmm. like sensors for, uh, I guess, uh, like, you, like you mentioned leaks, is this more like gas leaks or some type of, uh, you know, what, what is it like the, the, the smoke that you, that you get in, um, not a smoke detector, but you know, like, you know, the, the, the gas, I'm not the name of the gas, but you know, yeah, you, you can yeah. monitor other, like other things, not only just, uh, I guess, technical things or, uh, computational things. So, um, I'm curious about how to, is it like safe, safety caution, like precautions and, and things like that? Yeah. So, uh, it can be a combination of things. We don't, uh, we, we kind of create a line. We don't go towards the security side of things. Right. Um, uh, but it's basically, uh, any sort of condition or equipment monitoring. So when you talk mm -hmm. about leak detection, let's say, you have a water leak under the sink, right? Or behind the cooler, which can create a damage for you. And it can be potentially, it can potentially lead to closing the location down for a few days, right? Or um, uh, overall uh, help, like helping you understand, hey, this water leak happened this this time. So helping with your insurance company, right? Um, um, so, so it's overall kind of con monitoring that condition. And, and I can present a little bit like what solutions we can deep dive in. So uh, on our website, uh, let me just showcase real quick. Absolutely, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so on our website, when you go on the solutions tab on connectorfresh.com forward slash solutions, we have all these use cases where temperature logging, like I mentioned, uh, automating the manual temperature logging, right? Uh, energy consumption. So energy consumption is huge nowadays. Uh, given the ESG goals, which every business is trying to get to and overall trying to understand, hey, is my equipment like consuming more energy? Does it need maintenance, right? Overall leak detection, um, um, uh, kitchen air quality, right? So uh, understanding that um, uh, can, can basically help you, hey, how are my overall operations, right? Uh, doing and uh, um, showcasing, for example, I mentioned like trash cleaning, right? Uh, or any sort of custom solution. Uh, when you talked about leak, for example, we have air quality. So when my workers are working in the kitchen, what are the CO2 levels, right? In the kitchen, is it 
from a health safety perspective, right? Uh, uh, is my temperature too high for my facility, right? So worker safety and things like that. So overall, the idea is when you take all these different use cases, you can monitor them based on using various different sensors. When we created this platform in a way that any different types of use cases, whether it's custom or we what we provide out of box can be onboarded very easily. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> that's that's yeah. pretty cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. We, I think we have a, a question in the chat here. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get that answer. So they asked, uh, uh, what are the industry's current CF in catering other than restaurants, or is there any roadmap for other industries? That's a really good question. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, our current focus has been on travel and hospitality, which includes uh, overall restaurants, um, uh, QSRs, uh, like full service restaurant, quick service restaurant, fast food chains. Uh, we are also focusing on retail where your C stores uh, are available. Uh, grocery stores are there all the way from processing facilities to stores themselves, uh, whether your food is maintained at the right temperature in the coolers, freezers, and so on. And um, um, but I want to highlight that overall, this can become much more generalized, right? Whether you have um, a pharmaceutical industry, uh, other tra um, transportation industry, 3PL. So it applies on various different industries. So um, uh, currently on our roadmap, we are focusing on travel and hospitality and retail. But yeah, that's the uh, plan. It can be uh, much more generalized than that. Okay. So yeah, so I kind of say so you, you really insist, you know, that... Uh, it the benefit, uh, the beauty, or the benefit is that you know we can have that early detection, right? So, so my question mm -hmm. would be, how have you seen, um, you know, what should like like an an operator, right? Let's say I'm operator of a restaurant. Uh, what type mm -hmm. of you know information do I really get, you know, to uh, regarding that early uh, detection, for example? Yeah. So, um, uh, early. So, on top of monitoring, basically. Um, uh, what we are trying to do is early detection. Hey, it's a combination of your compressor in your walk-in cooler or refrigerator may be maintaining the temperature, but is it consuming too much energy, right? If over time there is a pattern, right, which we can basically detect through our machine learning uh, capabilities and AI capabilities that um, a particular equipment is not performing like it should, or at least consuming more energy or higher vibration, there are uh, certain uh, uh, data which are indicated for that, um, uh, we can basically raise uh, raise a flag saying, "Hey, uh, this needs to be this needs to be addressed." Right? It can lead to an action item such as maintenance work orders, right, um, uh, for their maintenance providers, or it can basically fall into: do, Is it time to buy another uh, equipment before uh, uh, my infrastructure goes down or my operations get affected? So, yeah. Wow, I think this is a, a pretty good study based on the the previous question I was asked uh, by the by someone in the chat. Maybe you can even integrate with you know some type of like insurances where uh, you're you're monitoring, like you mentioned, uh, you know some abnormal or even it's just overall use. They recommend it needs to be changed at this uh, particular time. Uh, but um, I guess I'm curious about uh, baselining. Is this something where you know, the sensors are on, it's, it's on for, you know, five days or three days, and it does some type of like anomaly detection. Uh, I guess, uh, how, how, do, how does that work? Yeah, so uh, great question. So uh, uh, there are various sorts of monitoring you can talk about, right? One is, first is threshold monitoring. Hey, mm -hmm. has my um, uh, particular equipment has crossed a certain threshold, whether it's temperature, humidity, or uh, what are you trying to monitor, right? Then we kind of like correlate with your historical data that, hey, mm. uh, over time, have I seen a pattern of, hey, last three days, it has been really spiking, right? Or mm. it has dropped significantly than it normally does. So we do various different forms of uh, 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 linear regression, various different analytics, data analytics behind it to, to basically help our customers understand that, um, uh, what should be the ideal case versus where an anomaly is, right? Uh, so they can they can proactively think about it, right? Um, uh, and we have built all these this logic, so uh, you're not getting notified for unnecessary. There, there's not a lot of false positives, right? So uh, that kind of intelligence is built into the system because, for example, you have defrost cycles, cleaning cycles, right? Uh, we don't want to unnecessary 
clutter the end user because otherwise it becomes noise, right? So yep. we took that um, uh, in account and based on feedback from our customers that it's very important to make sure you have the right person getting the right alert and it's a legible alert, right? It's a credible alert. So, yeah. So, so awesome, yeah, awesome. so what, what, you, what you mentioned there was kind of very interesting because like you say, like you don't want to get too many, like not too many notifications, but you don't want to get a useless kind of notification, right? If they're doing the cleaning, then the temperature might not be the same as a regular operation, right? right? So uh, Connector Fresh has been, you know, has been a company since I think created in 2019, if I'm not mistaken, right? So how have you seen uh, temperature monitoring evolve since you've been uh, in, this, uh, in this field? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so temperature monitoring now, there is a lot of, uh, uh, since pandemic actually, because of the labor shortage, uh, there was a huge thing of, hey, how do I automate things which I don't need a person for, right? Because a lot of those things were being ignored for lack of a better term that, hey, even though compliance required me to take temperature, do I have to take it at that cadence, right? Because I don't have the resources to do that. Um, due to lack of uh, uh, labor in the market, right? Um, so it, it has evolved, right? People are learning more about, hey, if it's easier to automate with minimal cost and you have the overall labor savings, right? Um, uh, uh, these are good solutions. Then uh, on top of that, there are a lot of companies who are much more generalist, right? Who are providing like uh, HACCP, which is a HACCP uh, checklist, which FDA requires you to fill for your uh, food safety compliance, right? Uh, so they can add um, um, uh, a, a general capability like uh, temperature monitoring, but we go a little bit one step ahead, right? We wanna make sure that it is smart enough that it is sending you that credible alert, right? right. So we focused on that part of it and uh, uh, it has evolved significantly to a point where we are trying to partner and uh, have some existing partners uh, in the industry who provide the other side of uh, facilities management. And we provide the IoT monitoring uh, uh, capability part of it to their software, so yeah. Okay. Can you, awesome. can you maybe uh, share some example of, you know, our case studies, right? That highlight the impact mm -hmm. Connector Fresh has had on its customer uh, businesses. Oh yeah, absolutely. So um, uh, we have we have done joint uh, proven case studies with AWS. It is actually published um, where we saw significant savings for um, uh, one of our uh, major customers. So we provide um, these uh, solutions for various Chick Fil A individual franchises. And uh, uh, we have been there for uh, multiple years where they saw um, uh, various different catches, right? Whether uh, somebody forgot to plug the cooler back in, right? And after the cleaning cycle and they got an alert, oh, temperature is increasing significantly and they were able to save product, right? So product loss, overall food safety. I don't want to come in next day in the morning and seeing, hey, I don't have chicken to serve in my Chick-fil-A, right? So... <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so we, we have got various customer testimonies where uh, uh, we were able to provide these case studies of uh, whether it's uh, uh, QSRs like Chick-fil-A, whether it's uh, uh, food service uh, vendors, whether it's uh, um, a grocery chain and retail providers. Uh, for example, the other day I heard from one of the customers that um, uh, USDA, for USDA compliance, uh, we were able to prove through this data that we were in compliance for our food to be uh, under USDA, right? So uh, hearing that kind of testimonies, which they would never have that data because in the past you would manually log it and put the document somewhere, right? So, yeah. yeah. Wow. I know a lot of people will be really upset going to Chick-fil-A. Uh, uh, maybe not so much on a Sunday, but yeah, every other day of the week, uh, I think they'll be pretty upset. But uh, that's a great. I actually posted the the, uh, the case study if you all want to check it out um, in the chat. So feel free to check it out, guys. Uh, but yeah, that, that's great. Um, I love Chick-fil-A. So I'm glad that you helped them out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> that's, that's, that's really interesting. So you, you mentioned something regarding like the different data, right? Uh, that operator, right, would be able to, to know without uh, leveraging a solution like Connected Freight. So my question now is, how can a restaurant operator improve productivity with real-time alert from Connected Freight, for example? Yeah, so um, um, 
so what happens is like you don't need to be at the store a lot of times right um uh, to be able to monitor these uh, operations right so overall connectivity kind of like increases right uh, in a way that you can get alert wherever you are so most of these stores are not 24/7 operation right yeah. um so in order to get that in 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 the right time before before something bad already happens is very important right so the idea is hey um with real time connectivity i can get alert and it can be even up to a automated phone call so uh, uh, we have various types of alerts up to a critical level based on the customer preference where hey don't notify me for certain minor things but hey call me for if something really is happening big right so okay. great mm-hmm. great I, i do have a question um and i guess this is more towards uh we 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 were accumulating all of these alerts right and you know that's one side of the the story right so i guess any future implementations to maybe where not only you you get a, a, an alert where it's a text message or uh, some type of phone call but is there anything any actionable in automation that that is also maybe being looked in a pipeline in the future not just you know the notification side but an actual actionable right. thing maybe uh maybe calling the police if it's noticing uh you know a fire a fire <laughs> department or something like that where yeah. you know the, the the heat levels are pretty high so you know just things like that i'm curious right yeah so again i want to specify that we don't go in the security side of it that's uh-huh. our delineation right um but uh, a great question so the way we have architected obviously using uh, a lot of like aws native services it's microservices based approach which is api first so we can integrate with any external systems as long as it has capability to receive data so uh, mm-hmm. things like um, slack channels teams channels right like you have uh, pager duty or any mm-hmm. sort of other systems for example raising a work order ticket so if you have a, already a facilities management software or um, a maintenance software equipment maintenance software or a provider we can send them the noti- notification and create a work order for you so we have all these features built in already in the uh, already in, as a feature in the platform and uh, uh, the idea is hey we don't want to be just another screen for you to log in right as long as it can derive a meaningful action which provides you that benefit then uh it is available for you out of box yeah okay sweet sweet yeah so a little bit earlier so you you mentioned right uh that example which chick-fil-a was that was very fantastic and, and then you mentioned how uh, you support a uh, chick-fil-a like integrating and in kind of monitoring that in, in increase like the productivity right through food safety mm-hmm. uh so i i just imagine like a, a big company like chick-fil-a may already have some type of monitoring processes in place right uh when a company like connected fresh engage with chick fil a if they already have some sort of monitoring processes in place how do they integrate with what is already there uh, uh, prior to 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 the partnership yeah actually uh, to your point you would be surprised that how many large companies right even up to a lot of like uh, major brands like taco bells of the world pizza huts of the world they don't they're still doing this manually right oh, wow. um wow. so we were we were surprised like the scale in the industry where this need is right and uh, some of them are, are are a little bit more proactive in terms of technology adaptation so um, um uh, we have integrated with their systems if you already have devices which can basically send data to our platform we are open to integrate with them as well so uh, uh, again we want to make sure it provides you the value you're not um if you you're not just uh, it's not just a cost for you right uh, it has to drive a reasonable return on investment so uh, we can easily integrate with those devices as well because like i mentioned we are api first so just like we can send the data or a calculated uh, alert to external systems uh, we can uh, ingest as well from existing systems so okay so so awesome. so i so um, i just sorry about it so i just i just no, imagine, no, 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 no. right so, so moving from like a like a, look, those big company right moving from from a manual uh, a manual uh, reading and update right of the different type of information a manual login mm-hmm. of this kind of information to an automatic uh, system what are some of the you know the feedback that you receive from customer regarding the benefit of that type of uh, implementation uh, Yeah uh i mean one of the best feedback is oh one thing one less thing to worry about right 
uh, overall, when you have your early morning checklist, uh, all your data is already filled out, right? Um, uh, and you have that available for you to analyze it later as well. So our dashboards have very intuitive based on uh, uh, role-based access. So if you are at a corporate level and you want to see your various different franchises, you can see that. And at a franchise level, you have that access at a manager or how you want to provide access, like all your data, all your sensors, how they're doing, right? Um, uh, so the feedback overall has been really good that not only it has made it automated, so much more reliable, right? Because somebody who's not motivated enough might be taking logs, they might fill in for day after or, yeah. you know, like might miss a day, right? So now it's yeah. much more credible data that if you get audited by um, FDA or USDA, like you have a credible data to showcase that, no, we have been compliant, right? And this is the data to prove it or even insurance companies, right? Like overall. So we hear all the time that how not only it has operationally uh, made it more efficient and productivity has increased, but it is one less thing to worry about where we have the data on our fingertips, so. Oh, wow. Great. Well, let me just give a, a, a tune in for the uh, the chat because it looks like we have a few people who have just joined. Uh, so yeah, so welcome everyone. This is the Howdy Partner for Showed um, every Wednesday at 2 PT. Uh, we pretty much you know, connect with APN partners. Today, we have connected Fresh uh, and Tashar here. He's uh, explaining um, how, you know, they use their expertise in leveraging IoT, um, like AI and machine learning to help improve restaurant uh, equipment reliability and also uh, food safety. So um, if you have just tuned in, uh, you know, we're actually going to be starting, the, you know, showing a demo uh, later on in the show as well. So definitely stay tuned. And uh, we also are going to be put, putting out a survey as well. So definitely love to have, hear your feedback. And more importantly, we want to hear some questions from you all. In fact, if you want, just let us know where you're from, where you're tuning in from, and any questions that you would like to ask uh, us, uh, we would love to answer and, you know, get you that value um, out of, uh, you know, taking your time to, you know, sit with us today. So thank you again. And yeah, I just wanted to go ahead as far as uh, say hi to the, uh, the, the, new, the new folks that just came in. Okay. So... Uh... <clears throat> One more question is, uh, what advice like, like do you have for you know for restaurants that are looking to improve uh, geo operation? Yeah, so uh, I mean, one of the major advice uh, talking to various after talking to various different restaurants and various different exhibitions, right? Um, uh, think from a technology enablement perspective. It might not be um, uh, in terms of cost as expensive, right. To enable these use cases, um, like for example, these costs will rub, run into your sub thousands, not tens and thousands. Right. Um, so a lot of solutions are out there to make your life easier. So you can actually focus on the thing, which is important is the customer and the product which you're offering. Right. Um, so a lot of these, um, uh, uh, back in the house, um, when I say back in the house, like on back in the facility, um, uh, restaurant operations, you can help automate and it gives you insights of planning and around your business. For example, my CapEx expenses, right? Like what should I anticipate to spend in next year or six months? Do I need a particular equipment now or I can wait? Or uh, your OPEX expen uh, expenses, like operational expenses, such as negotiating with your uh, uh, maintenance providers, negotiating with your equipment providers, right? That how often do I need the service? Maybe I don't need it every three months, right? Um, based on the data I have seen from a third party independent service, right? Um, um, so, so value is overall there. Uh, enabled much quicker. And we partner with AWS and various different of our partners to, to provide that proof of concept, right? So uh, uh, in a way that, hey, see if it actually adds value, right? Uh, how important it is, right? How is it saving you money rather than becoming a cost line item for your expenses? So um, uh, it's a lot of the technologies out there, uh, but yeah, that, that would be like my major advice to uh, uh, newer and, and existing operators. Okay. Oh, wow. Great. Cool. So um, I guess uh, you have something to show us. Um, I guess, is there, is it any other questions before we, uh, I guess, start the demo? Because I'm sure everyone is excited to see what uh, Connected Fresh has to, to show us today. Yeah. Um, uh, so I can, I can dive into demo. Uh, just before that, I wanted to showcase... Um, uh, just talk about a little bit about uh, 
a LoRa van as a technology, right? Yeah. Um, so um, um, basically, for LoRa van um, to be in the market, it, it is relatively newer protocol, right? Um, but it, it is being quite successful, uh, especially in Europe, um, and North America, and parts of Asia as well. Uh, the main value proposition of LoRaWAN is it's extremely long range uh, and it provides that wide area network, right? And uh, 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 because of that, devices like this can last three to five years on a single battery instances, right? Uh, which is a huge value prop. So you don't need to plug that in or have it professionally installed, right? Uh, and these devices are like less than hundred dollars. So it's not a huge expense. So I'm spending a lot on hardware. And uh, the reason it can last for that long is uh, it sends the data and goes in deep sleep mode, right? So whatever cadence you set that in, it sends that data and goes in sleep mode. So that way it, it can be extremely cost efficient. Um, uh, and once you have a gateway like this, in one facility, it can basically provide a huge network. When I talk about long range, it's up to two to three miles um, because of radio frequency. So it can outperform any of the existing uh, protocols like Bluetooth, uh, Wi-Fi, you know, Zigbee, things like that. Um, uh, and, and we have seen because we transitioned and uh, uh, adapted LoRaWAN early on, and we are seeing that um, uh, uh, major factor in the market, right? And uh, now we are also going towards LoRa and roaming, which we are partnering with AWS to kind of bring to the market. So it even takes out the gateway. So you have further reduced your expenses that you don't need to potentially install gateways where you have the LoRa and network, just like a cellular network, right? Um, so, so a lot of, lot of new things coming up, right. Uh, on the hardware side and I, I'll deep dive into, uh, uh, software side now. Let me just share my screen here. All right. All right. Let me know when you guys see, see it. All right, is it visible? Yep, now it is. We're good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So here we have an overall customer dashboard. As soon as you log in, uh, we, as I mentioned, we created can that hierarchical. Can see the Sorry. screen. Um, I need to start connection. I have an issue. Probably going to be back in a few seconds. Okay. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, cool. Should I okay. should I continue? I think we have him. We have him back. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can, can you, you unmute? Me uh, my. We're we're good. I, I can hear. Right? I can hear you both. I can hear you both. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is uh, short. Can you then, can okay. you unmute? Uh, you know, mute it, but uh, for some reason we're not able to pick up your audio. I can hear his audio. I can hear him. Yeah, I think Yvonne is on I, your end. I think Yvonne. Yeah, I think it's on your end, Yvonne. Uh, can, we can hear you. I can see the screen as well. Um, let me just chat with him in the background. Yeah, no worries. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, you can. You, it's all yours. You can continue. Um, the, the audio is there. And, in fact, let me uh, – I can put in the full screen for you. Sorry. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so um, here we have our overall dashboard. Like, um, so out of box for user experience, we create in a hierarchical fashion. So uh, if you're at a corporate level, you basically see all your stores. So this is a hypothetical uh, chain which has various different stores in California area. And it provides you overall list and an interactive map. And But right here, overall, you can see, hey, what are my alarms across the board in various different uh, categories like critical, major, minor, right, or a warning state. Uh, it lets you deep dive into a particular location. So if a particular location has an active alarm or um, uh, active notification, it can basically show you by a specific color, right? Uh, so it will show you, hey, there's one critical alarm at this particular location. And uh, from a location level, uh, you can basically deep dive into, um, uh, sorry, from a corporate um, uh, uh, hierarchical across different location, you can deep dive into a specific location. So uh, it helps you kind of like 
drill down into where the issues are. So uh, at a high level, you see the overview, and then I can go on this location level where uh, it is showing that, hey, this location has a critical status, right? Because one of the alarm has um, uh, uh, alarm on it, right? One of the devices have alarm on it. Uh, here, it also allows you to filter by various different sensors, like I mentioned, um, uh, based on the use case. For example, you can have door open, close, uh, air quality, energy, feedback, um, your trash can full or not, leak detection, right? Uh, uh, overall, from the list, you can filter down and see, hey, this particular um, um, uh, device is have, that have active alarms, right? So I can basically drill down into that device level and basically see uh, how that device is doing, right? Uh, where this device is basically um, installed. So for example, my reach and fridge, and um, uh, it is an active alarm state, right? I can see the data and I can drill down, hey, uh, in the last three days, data has been spiking quite a bit. And, um, uh, but if I wanna go back and see last 30 days, I can basically see, hey, how my, this particular device is doing over 30 days. And see, this particular alarm came in at uh, today at certain time, right? So you can basically drill down and see that particular time. Sorry, can you guys still hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can you. Okay, okay. So I, yeah, I guess so I have a question now. Yeah, uh, I do have a question. So if there is a, if there's some type of major, um, you know, event that happens, and there's an alarm that goes off, uh, I guess. I know you didn't mention that it does just to conserve battery. It, it has a beaconing system to where every, you know, 30 minutes or a certain cadence. Um, is there certain things that I guess the solution is to those more important uh, as far as like, I guess what I'll be saying, um, the, the more, the, I guess the more critical things are, are you just recommending to lower down the cadence Well, speed up the cadence and it's, it's, it's less, uh, it's more frequent that it, you know, responds and gives an act, active status or uh, is there a way that if there is a, a certain alarm, no matter what type of cadence it has, it will immediately trigger it. Um, if there is something that's like significantly over a threshold. Yeah. So uh, great question, right? Like uh, I want to emphasize on a point that, uh, we don't want to just trigger an alert be just because it reached a threshold by a certain point, right? That's why we created these different severity types where you can have your uh, critical or uh, major or minor, right? So you can set thresholds based on, hey, if it has just reached certain like over, then just war it's a warning, right? And if it is a warning, you may not need a notification, just log it, right? But if right. it is a critical, it went over like quite a lot, right? And it is persisting, then, uh, hey, call me, right? Because it is a critical mm -hmm. alert, I need to take an action, right? So uh, it is very easily uh, configurable, self-configurable, where you can basically set your preferences that hey, what constitutes as critical versus major or minor or warning alert, right? So, yeah. Okay, great, great. Because yeah, you know, like you say, yep. when you get too much information, say I get notifications on my phone or anything right. like that, you kind of ignore, you kind of get desensitized to it. So exactly. uh, this is a, a great way to uh, be sure that, okay, yeah, this is the real deal. Uh, we do have, yep. it's not a fire drill. Let's go ahead and all hands on deck. So yep. yeah, I love that. Yeah, absolutely. And and the idea is not to kind of get bogged down into tsunami of alerts, right? And not actually pay attention to something you actually need to pay attention to. So um, uh, we 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 take that customer feedback and if, uh, uh, and and kind of like try to implement in a way that hey this alert is actually credible for you to act on right um, mm -hmm. so yeah uh, uh, continuing on the uh, overall like I mentioned you can deep dive into certain uh, uh, data sets you can export uh, into uh, CSV Excel for your analytics right uh, raw data or overall chart data right. And uh, uh, like I mentioned, you can adjust your thresholds um, uh, based on your role. Uh, it allows you to uh, adjust various thresholds if you want to fine tune it further. Hey, maybe reaching 40 is okay. I want to alert on 42, right? And so on. Um, so it's, it's very easily adjustable. A user can basically set their own preference, whether they want to get uh, alert, um, uh, e sorry, email on warning or text messages. Hey, send me a phone call when it's critical. So changing all this is uh, very self-service. So, yeah. Okay. Nice. 
and the, and the, and the contacts of uh, the support contact on the on the left is that from is that a, from to reach our connected fresh team in case something um... yeah yeah absolutely um uh, you can contact support it can create a ticket for you and um, okay. a, a dedicated customer service um a, a customer success manager can basically talk to you hey do i need to fine tune your preferences right or thresholds or notifications right so we we want to make sure that we make it self service but at the same time we are available throughout the process and even a uh, post installation to support you that it is actually providing you value so yeah wow i love this dashboard yeah this is a uh, this yeah, is yeah, yeah. Awesome. i mean yeah thank you guys so so i mean overall um we want to make it intuitive in a way that it is actually providing you that value and but we do understand that hey not everyone in restaurant industry or food industry have time to look at the dashboard right so we want to make sure we are sending you rich alerts to the right person at the right time with the right method right uh, for example some of our customers rather than onboarding and providing access to every single team member they just created a slack group channel right where uh, people get notified so whoever is on the shift can act on it right so um, uh, it's it's very flexible in that way so so one of the question i would have would be uh, how do you ensure that every single alert right that you send for example the, we can see on the on, on the left on the right right you have severity you have critical right um, mm -hmm. how do you ensure that uh, the alert that you send uh, always matches the exact uh, situation uh, that the customer uh, unknowingly right uh, is is facing um can you can you elaborate on that when you say situation like in in what sense so so, so for example uh, let's say that uh, the fridge right the fridge was uh, mm -hmm. maybe someone forgot to close the fridge right when they were right, living right. in the restaurant at night right so mm -hmm. uh, and and that could also be the same for so coming down to the critical the severity right is it like a different level of severity for example and how do we ensure right. that uh, the severity is the uh, the severity level that you send through the notification is the right one so it it kind of uh, matches the exact situation that's happening on premises for example yeah so um, uh, uh, like i was mentioning right um, you can basically set that criticality level uh, using the self service right so for example um, uh, if i if i basically look at a particular location i can deep dive and for that particular sensor i can set criticality level that hey it is critical if it has reached certain threshold uh, okay. and when you say yeah when you say somebody left the door open so we have door sensor as well so combination of door sensor and temperature sensor for a walk in cooler freezer it can notify you hey this door has been persistently open for more than 5 10 minutes for multiple amounts of times right so you are losing energy you're losing that cooling right um uh, so we can basically pinpoint that anomaly and data and relate it with the temperature data that hey these these times when the door was open it has been spiking right so okay. uh, based on these thresholds and preferences you can basically uh, figure out that yeah it is a credible alert i need to act on it and criticality level is defining that yeah it has reached up to that and alerts are very rich in a way which basically show you that um, uh, which which particular asset right what time and what type it is right high high temperature low temperature and the severity of it so it gives you those details yeah i really like the the, the location like the location feature right So if you have like, if you, uh, for example, like chain company like Chick Fil A, you have many yeah. uh, you know different uh, 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 restaurant uh, across the the the, the state. Then you know exactly where the problem is, uh, and if fast on the way you can you can address the issue. Yeah, that's that's really nice. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so I, yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no. So I think Yuan, you you got disconnected. We were talking about that. That. it's basically um uh, uh role based access right we are creating a hierarchical view where corporate level you can see all your location right but it's basically highlighting issues for you so i see hey if everything is okay none of these alerts are there but if i have a critical alert i can see that detail on which location and then through interactive map i can basically deep down and see oh, okay. deep dive and see hey this is uh, this is red there's something wrong here and basically deep dive into that particular location see the data and kind of like match it 
in comparison to other devices and that then deep dive further into that particular device. So it gives you that flow of, um, hey, I can get to the root cause much quicker than kind of like looking through uh, various different areas or talking to people or, you know, like figuring out manually. So, so one question would I have would be, is, is the notification persistent? For example, let's say you send a notification, it's in a notification, right? The, the, the fridge has been open for 10 minutes but maybe uh, the, uh, the, the operation operator doesn't take action, right? Is the mm-hmm. message persistent until yes. that issue resolved? Yeah. Yeah, or so, so yeah. Uh, platform out of box persist um, uh, that notification until okay. it is acknowledged, cleared manually, or it has been resolved. So for example, if the temperature comes back to that normal range, it will automatically clear it out, right? And um, 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 it basically s- resolves that alert. Um, or somebody can go in and manually acknowledge that alert as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is there, are the notifications like uh, they take a best effort step? Um, you know, cause I know with all these notifications, uh, I would, I would love to know as far as is, you know, if they, what if something happens where the notification doesn't go through as far as this alert, um, mm-hmm. how does it, how do we, how do you know that those messages are being, you know, delivered? Yeah, so we use a lot of uh, uh, API integration of third-party services, which basically um, uh, uh, sends us and gives us data for the notification which are not delivered, right? So it will send you that uh, reporting uh, uh, of those errors, right? So we are retroactively monitoring our own systems as well for making mm-hmm. sure that uh, it's being delivered. At the same time, for example, if your infrastructure is down, for example, uh, uh, my gateway in my particular location is down. So uh, if I open this particular uh, location, deep dive into that, I can see my gateway status, right? So yeah. we are actively monitoring that gateway and notifying um, uh, the customer that, hey, not only one of the sensors is inactive, but your overall infrastructure is down because gateway is not working, right? It can be possible that, hey, there's a power outage, right? For example, one of our customers find out, found out that they had a power outage because of this gateway notification. So <laughs> it can uh, it can be pretty powerful. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, 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 overall, we actively monitor our own assets. So we get uh, proper reporting on, hey, what are the devices which are offline, right? Notify and reach out to the customers uh, and make sure their operations are up and running, right? Uh, uh, and what are the notifications which are delivered if they've been acted on? If a notification has been persisted for a long time, reach out to the customer and make sure that they know yeah. what needs to be done at that particular time and um, how does it work? Because maybe a new member is not properly trained on it, right? So, yeah. Right. yeah. I, I really like that, That like, I really like that, you know, that, that side, right? Where it's not only about we have implemented the right and the customer is not is being notified when something happened. If they don't take action, then that's on them, right? I like the fact that you also receive the notification and you're kind of like making sure that it's not, it's not only about the customer, it's also about you overall. So that's just your customer obsession right. and to make sure that the, the customer is safe on their side. So you take action until uh, that issue is resolved on the customer side. So that's a, that, that's a great thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, customer obsession has to be number one to be successful, right? Uh, yeah. uh, otherwise, for them, it's just another system online and nobody's using it. We want to make sure there's adaptation, right? right? And it's providing them the value to be able to use it, right? So, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. <clears throat> All this talk about, you know, these alerts and alarms, you know, about food and stuff is getting me a little hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I am curious about it. I did see something, uh, you know, just as, not just necessary segue, but uh, there was something related to like some type of like calculator. So, so you know, maybe, uh, you know, a company that may be interested, uh, they can go on your website and, and, and run some numbers to even see what their potential savings could be. Yeah, absolutely. No, great question. So um, uh, what we did is we created a savings calculator, right? Um, uh, and And these are directly related to uh, the temperature use case where uh, um, a lot of times people don't realize that how much they are spending on just on labor hours, right? Um, um, because it has been done that way manually for 
I don't know, like 50 years, right? So uh, how these automations can save on labor, especially in the market where labor is very, very hard to find. Um, um, uh, so yeah, so overall, a single restaurant can save over $14,000 uh, every year just by automating just the temperature use case, right? And wow. product savings are just on top of it. So it, the, some of these numbers are just mind boggling, right? Like, because wow. this adds yeah. into their expenses. So uh, we, we created this easy calculator where you can say, hey, I take, for example, uh, per day, at least eight times um, uh, logs, right? My temperature logs. And maybe it takes me like total 20 minutes to go around to take that log. And uh, hourly wage for that particular worker, for example, in places like California and others, like a $15 an hour, right? And even if I have like two to five locations, even, even for two locations, it's basically a lot of productivity time and over a year, right? It adds up very, very quickly. <laughs> so wow. um, yeah, so a lot of times when we showcase this to customers, um, uh, it's very easy for them to interact and understand that, oh, wait, I'm paying this much just for somebody to take temperatures, right? Which I can easily mitigate, right? So, yeah. yeah. Wow. And, 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 a good, and a good thing about the mitigation is that like, uh, it's, it's proactive, right? So that's also one thing. Because sometimes right. like, if, if you have some, uh, you know, the gap between the last checking and the checking could be an hour, right? So, uh, and, right. and between that hour, so a lot of things can happen, right? Uh, something might be broken mm -hmm. for an hour and then we don't know yet until the person go again to check it. Why leveraging small monitoring switch my connected fresh, you have that, uh, you know, as soon as it happened, then you get notified. So uh, the loss, uh, you know, is very, it's significant compared to uh, if someone has to do it manually, yeah. What if it's yeah, overnight, I mean, you yeah. know, as well, yeah, exactly. right? you know, it can be exactly. overnight yeah. shift. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, the credibility part of the data, like, like how credible the data is, right? Um, that's very important because like I said, right, somebody might fill in for tomorrow's, right? And tomorrow something went down, that data is not correct. <laughs> that data is not credible. So uh, it's automatically doing it for you at whatever cadence you want is very powerful. So you don't have to worry about that. Oh, whether my worker actually like did this or not, right? So. Wow. <clears throat> so, so uh, another thing that I want to talk to, to maybe talk about a little bit that, that partnership with AWS. So, uh, is mm -hmm. Connected Fresh you know, what type of platform, like cloud platform, does Connected Fresh leverage? Uh, and also, maybe how you know how Connected Fresh utilizes microservices and containerization, right, to enhance uh, scalability and maintainability uh, in its architecture. Yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. I mean, we have been partners with uh, AWS since our very inception, right? And uh, uh, for example, AWS um, um, uh, released various different services like IoT Core for LoRaWAN, which helps us create our own LoRaWAN, um, uh, 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 it, it, like enable us our own LoRaWAN network, right? and uh, uh, connect various different devices at scale, right? So all these native services, we are fully cloud native, um, where it makes it highly, highly scalable. So if I wanna deploy uh, uh, and enable a new customer in let's say a thousand or 10,000 devices tomorrow, it can easily be done at scale without uh, us maintaining and worrying about our infrastructure, right? Um, so we built it out of box and native services and focused on that microservices architecture that uh, if a customer wants a custom solution or out of box, we can enable that very quickly, right? And uh, at the same time, be flexible, right? So for example, the dashboard I was discussing, um, uh, we use uh, low code, no code. So if a customer is looking for <laughs> a, a custom enterprise reporting, right? We can build that in the matter of weeks instead of, months or years, right? So the idea is to use those um, uh, native services and um, uh, uh, out of box uh, configuration rather than maintaining it, you know, manually. So, uh, I mean, I personally have been uh, uh, in, in within cloud architecture for over 10 years. And mm -hmm. uh, I come from a background where we used to build me and my business partner used to build these uh, systems uh, in, for industrials, right? For smart factory, for uh, discrete manufacturing, for oil and gas. So um, the scale of these systems has to be at a point where if I'm even getting sub-seconds of data, 
can I handle that? Can my system handle that? And show me insights right. and uh, wrangle through millions of data sets to show me those insights, right? Uh, because most organizations don't have these systems existing, right? So rather than building them from scratch and taking that time and uh, uh, cost to it, we can provide that very, very easily um, uh, out of box. So that's where our partnership with AWS really shines, right? So uh, that's the technology part. And then I can deep dive into uh, how are we partners on the go-to-market side and uh, uh, receive yeah. various different competencies. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, uh, yeah, on the go-to... Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. No, no, sorry, go ahead. No, see, yeah, I was about I was about to say like you mentioned or you already yeah. mentioned all those mini services, like AWS services that you mm-hmm. that you you've leveraged, right? So I, I was about to say like mm-hmm. in what other ways like your partnership with AWS like enable you to better uh, serve an industry customer, for example. Yeah, absolutely. So um um so as I covered the technology aspect, um, um, uh, the go-to-market aspect is very important, right? Which not a lot of companies provide, right? Um, uh, and that's where we really love working with AWS at how fast they can enable you for go-to-market. So uh, first thing comes is the market credibility, right? So we have various different competencies which you can basically get approved for and applied and go through a rigorous process to make sure your systems are actually credible, right? Uh, Enterprise can trust your system. So um, uh, we are basically, we have IoT competency, we have travel and hospitality competency, we have retail competency for SaaS, um, uh, software as a service to basically cement ourselves that, yeah, this product is very credible in the market, not only at scale, but in terms of data security, uh, in terms of um, uh, overall reliability and resilience, right? So uh, those things really make a difference because when I'm talking to a large enterprise, it brings that credibility right away and I can basically build on that further. So, yeah. Well, we do have a question in the chat um, from Jordan. Uh, are there any other integrations you see happening with AWS in the future? Yeah, so um, we are, as I mentioned, we are fully uh, integrated within AWS environment, and but we are also uh, supporting AWS service um, uh, teams, right? Like for the as their beta customers. So we have a, a new service called um, uh, Roaming, so LoRaWAN Roaming, which is. Uh, natively built within AWS, which will be uh, enabling and testing out new customers. Um, uh, we will also have like zero touch provisioning of devices. So for example, everything comes pre-configured, you turn it on and uh, uh, it, we can directly send it from our hardware vendor to the end customer rather than us having additional step of configuring it, right? So uh, these are some of the uh, AWS services. Plus uh, we are working with AIML um, uh, very, very rigorously with AWS. So a lot of their AI ML services we are integrating with uh, to build more use cases. So uh, for example, um, uh, computation and anomaly detection, right? Um, uh, to be able to run our data models natively in AWS cloud using the services and at scale, for example, wrangling through thousands of lines of, da- uh, lines of uh, data uh, at scale, that AWS makes it very easy. That's awesome. He actually has a follow-up question, uh, yeah. which is, uh, how does one g- uh, get to be part of the beta, beta testing crew? Yeah, um, um, I would say it, it has to do a lot with uh, reaching out, right? Because you don't get 100% of things you don't ask for. <laughs> so we have, yeah. have kind of like reached out to AWS, became their uh, startup partner, uh, uh, ISV Accelerate Partner. So they have various different programs which you can participate in, right? Which will basically get you in touch with services, right? Teams. And um, it basically highlights you that, yeah, you are there to help build this technology enablement in general. And uh, uh, a lot of these programs help you give you resources, like for example, AWS credit. So you're not putting a lot of investments out of pocket to be able to test out new features, right? So. Great, okay. great. So, are there like any future plans or maybe upcoming uh, feature like Connected Fresh might be working on, right? Uh, it's going to enhance his solution uh, and, and better serve uh, his customer. 
Um, yeah, so we have we have future plans. Um, so, for example, um, uh, we recently launched uh, energy consumption, right? And kind of like relating that in terms of overall equipment health. Um, th- these are some of our recent launches. We want to go one step ahead and basically do predictive maintenance. So, for example, uh, and this has been widely used in industrial sites, so manufacturing and other heavy industries, but not so much in travel, hospitality. Uh, industry but if you if you think about it right like those equipments are pretty expensive too like um, uh, especially for a, a restaurant operator that can add into a lot of expenses so doing a uh, predictive maintenance through ai ml uh, that's something uh, coming on our roadmap and then we also want to uh, integrate with various different um, we are uh, in our pipeline uh, uh, integrating with various different partners who provide existing capabilities on for example uh, inventory management, right, or uh, uh, other features where we can basically um, uh, showcase them real-time data to fill in the gaps in their inventory management, right? Um, so, so those things are coming on roadmap. A lot of exciting use cases for our existing and new customers. Okay, so the, the the predictive maintenance, right? Uh, the predictive maintenance mm-hmm. aspect that uh, you you are about to get to, you fit in. It's like a, a kind of a feedback that always coming from from your customer, right? Because you're able to uh, deploy those pre- those uh, modern monitoring solution. We always get into the from the customer asking maybe asking like also can what can you do on the uh, on the hardware device level or uh, or uh, where did it come from like there to also start in doing that predictive maintenance. Uh, yeah, it was, th- that's a great question. So um, the way uh, I have learned my ta- through my time in uh, being in IoT specifically industry is there are three phases. One is preventative right, where you actually deploy the devices, collect the data, understand the equipment behavior, for example, faults, right, like how many times it has gone down, what are the reasons, what factors it affected, um, uh, uh, what factors basically made it go down, right, or showed some sort of fault. So that's like your preventative maintenance, right? What you do, you collect that data and add on the context of maintenance data that what it took to resolve that issue, right? So um, uh, understanding that trend and using machine learning uh, algorithms to basically train your data that, hey, these these are the factors when the machine is like goes down, right? So when these factors are coming to a near point, right? Or it's basically trending towards that, showcase that, hey, up to a certain percentage of certainty, your equipment can go down. And um, uh, we have, uh, uh, from our past experiences in companies like Deloitte and Hitachi's of the world, we implemented this successfully for industrial um, uh, uh, customers. Um, so those are the learnings which kind of like show us that, hey, this can be done in travel and hospitality as well. And basically from predictive, then how do you make it prescriptive? Right. So prescriptive basically is, hey, now I know my device is going to go down or my equipment is going to go down. What action I need to take? Right. Mm -hmm. Can I um, tell, can I send my compressor a down um, uh, signal for a change or I need to drive uh, uh, an action for somebody to come fix something? Right. So it becomes prescriptive. So um, uh, those phases are very important in terms of maturity of your operations, right? Uh, uh, They are precursors of each other. You cannot get to predictive until you have preventative. So, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. So so I I like when you you mentioned like the the prescriptive, right? The prescriptive guidance on uh, how much of an impact do you think reaching that level, uh, how much of a benefit do you think a uh, restaurant, not only like not the only restaurant, but even the travel mm-hmm. to how much of an impact or benefit would you think a, a company that leverages this type of technology will benefit? Yeah, so like I mentioned, right? Like your first value prop is um, uh, labor savings, right? Labor savings in terms of temperature use case is right away, right? You can see that um, um, starting day one, right? Like um, that you can focus on more on customer side, right? Uh, then overall customer experience, right? Uh, uh, depending on your use cases, for example, 
uh, uh, your bathroom clean is not, or your supplies are replenished or not, right? Whether your trash is full or not. So overall customer experience, right? So, uh, and then on top of that, your CapEx and OpEx, right? Capital expenses and operational expenses. That um, if I am, if I am uh, consuming more energy than I should have, right? Uh, uh, or uh, I can compare with various stores within the same area given uh, comparative uh, uh, energy prices, right? Like, am I consuming more than I should, right? And then deep diving it to an equipment level, right? That, hey, this equipment needs maintenance to reduce my energy consumption. So there's your saving right away, right? So there are various different uh, value proposition where you can basically deep dive into a group of use cases or individual use cases, right? And show you that, hey, this particular equipment needs maintenance and this is how much it's going to save me in near term and in long term, right? Yeah. Right. I do, I do have a question because um, you did bring this up a few times. Um, how in the world am I going to know when my garbage is full? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So we have something called, have right here with me. We have something called ultrasonic distance sensor. So what it's doing is it's basically going under the uh, cover of the garbage bin, right? And it's basically measuring the distance of uh, how my garbage level is coming up, right? So you can set a threshold that, hey, from, uh, I don't know, like a two feet garbage can, it reached almost like 1.6 or 8 feet. That's time to change the garbage, right? Before it becomes like a, uh, uh, before it becomes like overfill, right? So, uh, I mean, it's, it's mind boggling that the wow. amount of <laughs> use cases you can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, similar for uh, customer feedback, like you must have seen in airports and all, you have like happy, okay, neutral, sad button to give customer feedback or just to, hey, replenish supplies here or bathroom needs cleaning. So we can have custom feedback buttons and mm. all of that uses the same platform. So right. for one customer, if I have a temperature use case, I can just send additional sensors to enable other use case without any other um, uh, 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 setup cost, right? Or a base cost. So uh, it, it's really, it's really mind boggling that how easy these mm. use cases can be enabled, right? And right. the value it's providing, right? So. That's awesome. Yeah, and I mean, these are all going to be using the same uh, the same gateway, as you mentioned, right? So it's not like you right, have to right. dish, not only additional equipment, but not also another gateway yeah. for that particular device as well, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I wanted to showcase another device. So for example, this device, uh, it is a clamp on. So this clamp basically goes around a live wire, right, inside your utility box, and it can measure the consumption of energy in amperage, right? So if I have my HVAC system or any other system which is consuming energy, it can basically tell me that, hey, over time it's increasing or at certain point how much it's consuming. So you don't need um, to have huge installation cost, right, to set these up. It is very easily installable, uh, uh, all these devices. And again, to your point, it uses the same gateway, same protocol. Uh, so you don't have to enable them, connect them. Everything comes pre-configured. You just turn them on and they start working and showcasing on your dashboard. Wow, that's that's pretty good. That's nice. Uh, you don't have to worry about any, you know, like I say, the installations. It may take months and weeks right. to do this. So um, I, I'm, I'm curious, you know, from a perspective of someone who's just coming in uh, and they have their restaurant, for example, what what is the process of them getting on board? I know you say it's very easy to get the equipment, but I guess me starting out, what's the process from us talking about it to me actually getting an alert, you know, about my water leaking? Yeah, um, uh, it's as simple as um, um, uh, just letting us know. So we have a get started form, getting started form, where you can say, hey, I have these many coolers, walk-ins where I need monitoring, right? Uh, or uh, very easy to set up a demo or a call with us We can where we can take your requirements, right? That, hey, I want to monitor XYZ assets uh, for XYZ uh, conditions, that's temperature, humidity, energy consumption, right? Leak detection. And uh, it's as simple as that, um, uh, us pre-configuring everything within the matter of hours, not weeks, and sending it to you, uh, the everything prepackaged with gateways, sensors, 
uh, and all you do is plug in the gateway, uh, connect with the network, uh, turn on the sensor, and your network is up and running, right? And uh, we, uh, you will get links to uh, access the dashboards where you can start seeing the data right away as soon as you uh, enable the sensor. So it's as simple as that, right? It doesn't need various different, right, uh, external parties to come in and survey your area or anything else, mm-hmm. right? Uh, it's as simple as that. Okay. Wow. So, so now restaurant operator, so you know, so you just like a few, I would say a few days, right? Uh, from mm-hmm. from when you, j- you jump on that get started with connected fresh and then they can you know depending on what type of uh, what type of uh, issue you're trying to address or depending on what type of solution you want they can provide you you can provide you that yeah and they can ship you the device and you can just plug it's like just a plug-in device and then you have it connected uh, that you have a level lower one connected to the gateway you have access to the, to the dashboard and then from there you can just modify you can just sorry monitoring uh, all your uh, all your equipment uh, all your, uh, you know, food safety, for example. I mean, that that's that's yeah. that's a uh, that's yeah. really really great. Like, uh, I really love the the technology. You know, what you can do. You know, as I I, I was in a restaurant, uh, no restaurant business, but I was just like a server mm-hmm. when I was in college. And, and and then from seeing how, I mean, we were not leveraging that technology, right? So we're just doing it right. very manually. Uh, but now seeing how IoT can be leveraged. You know, to to prevent food um, food damages, uh, so that's a, a good thing. So yeah, um, absolutely, and 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 consumers are getting more and more aware of these things, right? So having that data to back up that um, uh, that we are maintaining that food safety standards, right, for the government and for your end customers, it 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 gives that huge confidence, right, in your brand credibility, in your overall operation. So yeah. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. So I guess in the future, uh, you know, we, we're as humans, uh, we, we have a lot of wasteful problem problems. And one of our pillars at AWS is sustainability. Um, mm-hmm. I'm curious how also, you know, maybe with like food expiring and, you know, just letting you know, Hey, this food is not good because of, you know, certain conditions. Uh, is that something that you've encountered with like, customers expressing like some certain pain points similar to that, or uh, that's not necessarily, um, that hasn't really been expressed yet? Yeah, so um, uh, we are not, uh, I mean, that is a general pain point in the industry, right? But in terms of sustainability, uh, yeah, food wastage is one thing which we are reducing, right? Like for any sort of operational inefficiencies, you're not wasting food. Um, uh, but on top of that, for sustainability, so ESG goals, like I mentioned, which is uh, environmental, sustainable, and governance, right? Um, uh, uh, most businesses are trying to meet these goals, and that includes, in a major way, energy consumption, right? How much right. you are consuming the energy and how efficient you are, right? So, and, and that energy is directly relating to your food safety and um, uh, uh, food security standards, right? Um, so, uh, um, uh, in U.S., for example, so much food is wasted, right? Because, hey, um, this cooler, we don't know if it's defrosted overnight because of the power outage and refrosted, right? Um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and similarly, like, uh, um, you can figure out, hey, this food is okay to serve or not, right? So we are not focused so much on the expiration part because mm-hmm. that is more towards the inventory management. Um, right. We want to make sure that, we are focused more on the IoT part of it where various different sensors can provide you that um, uh, uh, conditional monitoring uh, to showcase, hey, not only food, whether your guest safety is there or not, right? Air quality is right or not, right? Um, um, so so all those use cases can easily be uh, enabled. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Powerful. All right. Do you have any comments in the chat? Okay. It looks like yeah. forward. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Roy the legend built. <laughs> right. Oh, forward. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So <laughs> chat, if you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and, you know, paste them in the chat and we'll be more than happy to go ahead and get them answered. Um, don't, don't hesitate at all. And uh, if you are just tuning in, uh, we do have Tushar on the line here with us for this Howdy Partner episode. Uh, and we're discussing Connected Fresh, 
and again, how they're sharing their expertise in IoT, AI, ML, and you know, how it can improve restaurant uh, equipment reliability as well as uh, food safety. Uh, so yeah, definitely, uh, you know, spam as far as the chat with your questions and your emojis, your favorite emojis and all that good stuff. Uh, well, yeah, that's great. Uh, I know I've had so many questions, um, you know, to ask you about the food industry because I'm not too uh, familiar too much as far as with IoT. I might have my uh, my ESP thirty. Too, I believe it was or something like that, but I haven't really done too much. So it's really cool to see how uh, these things can really impact our everyday lives for the better, and, you know, not just for convenience, but also for the safety component as well. So I, I do think that is uh, pretty phenomenal what you guys are going. And this is, uh, you know, I think I just, you, you, Yvonne mentioned you guys are started like in 2019. So the, the speed yeah. uh, that you all have been doing and the innovation that you have been doing, I'm sure, you know, with the uh, relationship with AWS has, uh, you know, helped accelerate that so uh i'm definitely excited and so to see what you guys have uh, you know to offer in the future as well so this is pretty pretty sweet man oh, absolutely and uh, uh, the overall partnership has been phenomenal like we 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 have we have had various different events where uh, aws has brought us to um, customers right like are discussing the actual value prop not just from an upsell perspective that yeah this something you may not be thinking about right now but this is coming up, right? This in terms of tech enablement, this technology is coming up. So don't fall behind in your overall um, uh, uh, planning out in the tech, tech enablement part. So various different large, um, uh, uh, like QSR chains, you know, like um, uh, various different larger enterprises who have thousands of locations. Um, it, it is still like very mind boggling that they still don't have these basic enablements done, right? So uh, having that AWS support kind of really helps us in setting up, hey, this is a credible company and not just another um, uh, person trying to sell something, right? Uh, right? It is credible. It is proven in the market. And uh, that's why we were able to do these case studies to showcase that, hey, it's a real saving, right? It's a real value you're adding. Um, uh, and, and it is very easy to use. So ease of usage is very, very important for us. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's that's really great to have that uh, a partnership, you know, being straightened through different uh, opportunities. So so I know you like, you know, AI now is a very hot topic. So I just want to know like a little bit how much AI played in terms of role into a, a connected first solution. Yeah, so um, uh, AI um, enablement is on our roadmap where uh, as these equipments become much more connected, so a lot of uh, major equipment and manufacturers uh, uh, who supply equipment to uh, whether it's retail facilities or restaurant facilities, uh, travel industry, um, they are making connected uh, equipment, right? So through AI, basically we can... Um, I talked about the prescriptive part of it, right? Where you can yeah. actually send a command to um, uh, uh, to basically make the device make certain change or take an action, right? So that sort of connected kitchen concept is coming to the market soon and where AI will play a huge role uh, in terms of, hey, how can I do a corrective action, right? Okay. So through AI um, uh, and machine learning, I'm basically figuring out what's wrong what action to take and then driving that action uh, where we can maybe minimize human interaction, right? Um, uh, in a way to make it much more effective and, and, and uh, uh, available much more often, whether it's middle of the night or any time where you don't have actual person there to take an action on it. So, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I think, I, yeah, I think it's definitely come down to like making, making it more, more proactive, right? Uh, and, and then that way we can reduce uh, or we can really take down maybe close to zero the number of uh, maybe uh, impact that uh, a cooler not being closed will have on, on the business the, right. the next day. Yeah. 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 Right. And uh, uh, it can it can be as simple as that. Hey, train your staff that yeah. for best practices of making sure that the walk in freezer is closed because that's going to cost you a lot in utilities and possible product loss. But at the same time, it can be as simple as that all the way to 
uh, sending a command to a compressor to basically, uh, you don't have to overrun, right? You don't have to keep running at certain rate, right? Or um, uh, shut down at certain times, right? So uh, based on the external temperature um, factors and so on, so yeah. Awesome, awesome. So, um, I guess is there is there anything else that you would like to show us, Tashar? Uh, no. So these these are the uh, major things I wanted to showcase. We have um, various different um, uh, solutions up to a custom solution point, um, uh, and um, uh, proven case studies which are very interesting. Um, uh, I'm always I, I always love to talk about IoT and tech in general. So huge enthusiast and uh, yeah, anyone who wants to reach out and get started, um, uh, not even from a sales perspective, but in general to discuss this, right? Uh, happy to happy to uh, have that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. Awesome. With that being said, maybe we can just um, to share uh, the link here. So for anyone who wants to reach out, maybe uh, for like a one-on-one -on -one session, maybe to have either a deep dive. To have a better understanding of what Connected Fresh does, or maybe just like big interest in IoT, uh, can I post your LinkedIn in the chat? Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So uh, please reach out, um, and then uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So that was great. Yeah. I really enjoyed this episode. Um, I definitely learned quite a bit. Um, I definitely have some uh, some homework to do now uh, to see how I can, uh, you know, maybe even set this up for home appliance. I know you, you know, have this for the restaurants, but, you know, even just some something in the future where, uh, you know, even home appliances where, hey, our water bill is very high. Um, maybe this can be something that can scale out to uh, consumers uh, as well before they even get to the restaurant or when they're going home and putting that doggy bag in the fridge, you know, ensuring that it is actually safe to eat and, and things like that. So I do think that this is a great starting point, but I'm sure that um, Connected Fresh can certainly, you know, be in everyone's household, you know, across the nation and the world as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, overall, right now we are focusing on B2B, so businesses mm -hmm. and helping them at scale, because that's where we, um, um, that's how we build the platform at scale that, hey, thousands of locations, hundreds of sensors, right? But yeah, um, uh, consumers can take advantage of this. There are various different uh, solutions out there in the market. And uh, I'm always happy to talk and discuss that. Uh, I myself at home have deployed the energy uh, monitoring thing, so um, uh, very, very easy to do. And uh, um, uh, you, you would be surprised how, how easily you can enable that versus like five years ago, you know, so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so I mean, it, it's definitely a good thing when you, you, you level the, the technology you, you serve, right? It's not only like we just make it for other people, we're also using it. So at least you have a better right. feedback to give to people. And also people can see that, you know, it's really something that's tangible because you're using it. Uh, as well, especially in your house. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, every single innovation and solution starts with a problem statement. And most of times, like it's, on, it's in our general lives. And uh, for us, for example, just to tell you a little bit of a story, like we had a friend in produce industry uh, up in St. Louis who was like, hey, how do I monitor my product, like my um, uh, uh, fresh pro uh, fresh vegetables and tomatoes and all um, uh, automatically, right? Like, uh, so that's where we started. Oh, this, this is doable. We can do this. And that's how like uh, our start was there. Uh, and to a point <laughs> where, hey, every single restaurant, food service, groceries need this. So, yeah. Yeah. It's like you say, problems, you know, create and incubate. Uh, creativity right. and uh, innovation. So uh, we always need problems. Some of some problems we don't really want, but you know they definitely bring out you know a lot better things in the long run. So uh, this this is fantastic, Absolutely. and uh, yes, yeah, that's that's been great. So let's anybody in the chat saying okay. We don't have anything. So maybe to Charmin, yeah. we want to ask you uh, maybe one last question. So. Where I know it might be a little bit uh, too much, but where do you see connected fresh in five years from now? Uh, just as a close argument to for the audience, what kind of interested? Uh, 
Yeah. Um, uh, overall, what we see is creating an ecosystem where um, um, even the smallest operator to large enterprises can enable these technologies and we can be there to enable that. Um, uh, where we see ourselves, and this is just me thinking out loud, <laughs> uh, hey, if powered by connected fresh is there, that means food is credible. It has been monitored and maintained to a safety standard where you don't have to think about twice, right? So that's where we see ourselves, where we become to a point where um, uh, it, it's, it adds the credibility to the brand that this brand is proactively monitoring their assets and foods uh, without any external government uh, or any agency to check into it. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so every, every time you work in a restaurant, you just see that connected fresh logo, you know for sure that Everything you're gonna eat in the is is safe, right? So, <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's like a check mark. <laughs> the stamp yeah, of I mean, approval. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very nice. So, um, well, I think that brings us to the uh, to the end of the show. Um, mm -hmm. I do appreciate you, Tashar, giving us as far as a thorough. Uh, you know, review of, you know, your service and your product and uh, what you all have in store in the future. Uh, it's been a definite an honor uh, as far as you being here with us. And uh, yeah, I definitely appreciate uh, you as well, uh, Yvonne, you being a great co-host as well. And uh, yeah, definitely appreciate number one, the viewers out there we have as far as quite a bit as far as on the yeah. stream now. So uh, we definitely thank you all for tuning in. And remember, uh, this is going to be every Wednesday. So we do have another episode uh, next week at 2 p.m. PT and definitely stay tuned. Uh, and yeah, definitely would love to see as far as great companies and great partners, uh, you know, involved in our APN, you know, showcase their product and service like you've done today, uh, Connected Fresh. So thank you, Tishar. Yeah. Well, thank absolutely, guys. Much. Really, really appreciate uh, for inviting us, uh, for us to showcase this. Um, this is my first time doing a live stream, <laughs> uh, to be honest. So, uh, but um, yeah, it, this is great. And I love interacting with people and uh, uh, happy to um, have one on ones. Anyone want to reach out? Just like, in general, IoT enthusiast or want to get started. So yeah, yeah but yeah, I really appreciate Patrick and Yuan for uh, setting this up, walking me through all the basics, and yeah, this has been great. No, we are the ones who say thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you for accepting the invitation. You. you know, interview here. <laughs> thank you very much. And for everyone, yeah, uh, LinkedIn is in the chat. So if you want to reach out for one on one, or if yeah. you want to get more to about on better understanding of what Connected First does, if you're interested, right? And also if you just cloud uh, uh, IoT enthusiasts and want to talk more about IoT, feel free to reach out to, to the shop. That's yeah. right. Thank That's you guys. right. Appreciate it. Okay. So thank you, Howdy Partners. Also, there is a survey. Um, we would love you guys to uh, let us know how we did, how we can improve. Your feedback is what fuels us to get better. So definitely let us know what we've done well and uh, what we can improve on uh, on top of that. So thank you, everyone. And uh, Howdy. Howdy, yeah. all. <laughs> howdy, guys. <laughs> thank you. All right. Let me...